there's a big change coming in Azure that will impact how your cloud virtual machines access the internet. Let's take a look at what's changing. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raltos. If we deploy a virtual machine or scale set in Azure today, the computers will have access to the internet even if we didn't explicitly configure internet access. That will change in September 2025. And if you deploy computer resources in Azure, you'll need to be aware of this change. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. Check out my courses on Enter ID and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD, Azure Virtual Desktop, and Windows 365 with Intune Management. Links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it. Before we review the change, let's take a look at how internet access for computers in Azure currently works. A virtual machine in Azure has multiple ways to connect to the internet. Firewalls, public IPs, and load balancers, for example. These paths are evaluated in order. First is the next routing hop. If you have a firewall or network virtual appliance, traffic is routed to that device. Routing needs to be configured for this to work, and typically VNet peering is used to connect multiple VNets to a firewall VNet. Next, if a NAT gateway is attached to the subnet, that will be used to access the internet. Then, if the VM has a public IP address associated with it, that will be used. Next, if there's a standard public load balancer with an outbound rule defined, that's used. These three options use explicit source network address translation or SNAT. After that, if there's a load balancer with a rule that sets disable outbound SNAT to false, that's used next. And finally, if all these are evaluated and none apply, then default outbound access is used. Default outbound access uses an implicit IP address that belongs to Microsoft. The IP address is not static, it may change. Default outbound internet access is not recommended for production workloads. Basically, with default outbound access, we let Microsoft handle internet access. This works, but we as administrators have little control over that virtual machine's internet access. That's what's changing in September of 2025. At that time, default internet access will be retired. After that, any new virtual machine deployed in Azure will need explicit internet access set before they can access the internet. That may seem inconvenient, but I think it's a good thing and possibly limit security risks. For example, an on-premises environment probably has some content filter and other controls for clients and servers that access the internet. A server deployed in Azure can bypass those controls with default outbound access. Another example is Azure Virtual Desktop. We can deploy a host pool and with default outbound access, the users can simply access the internet. But again, that bypasses any internet controls or content filtering we have in place for on-premises users. So what do we need to do before September 2025 when default outbound access is retired? Well, the good news is, is that any existing deployments will continue to work. Microsoft is not taking away default outbound access for virtual machines created before that date. But default outbound access won't work for computers created after that date. So if you're deploying a virtual machine after that date, that virtual machine will need explicit internet connectivity enabled. Likewise, if you deploy virtual machines to existing subnets, those subnets will need explicit connectivity to the internet. And any existing computers on that subnet will use the explicit method as well. As we previously discussed, there are a few ways to configure explicit connectivity to the internet. A network virtual appliance, Firewall, NAT Gateway, Virtual Machine Private IP Address, and Load Balancers can all provide that functionality. Each has its own feature set and configuration options. An organization will need to evaluate the requirements to make the best choice. We won't go over each option in this video. However, we will go over one. A NAT Gateway provides a static IP address for multiple computers on a subnet and is a simple and relatively inexpensive option for internet access. Coming up next, we'll configure a NAT Gateway. Let's jump into the portal to get started. Here we are in the portal. If we look at the VM, we can see it has a private IP address, but no public IP address. And if we go to the VNet, it's just a standard VNet with no gateway or VNet peering. No tricks up my sleeve, just a simple VNet with a VM attached. This VNet does have an Azure Bastion subnet, Azure Bastion allows us to connect to the VM without a public IP address. Let's hop over to the VM. And we have the web browser open to IP Chicken. 
That's a website that displays your public IP address. The server has a public IP used with default outbound access. This configuration won't be an option with virtual machines deployed after September 30th, 2025. Okay, next we'll create a NAT gateway. A NAT gateway will provide an explicit way for all computers attached to the subnet to access the internet. Let's go back to the portal. And we'll go back to the resource group. All the resources for this demo are in the same resource group. We'll create a new resource. And search for NAT gateway. There it is. We'll create a NAT gateway. Make sure the correct subscription and resource group are selected. Give it a name, NAT GW for this example. Something easy. It should be in the same region as your VNet. We can deploy to specific availability zones. Let's leave it set to no zones. We can also leave the idle timeout as default. Go to outbound IP addresses. We can give it a single IP address or a range of addresses. There's a SNAT port limit for each public IP. Adding a range of public IPs will increase the number of SNAT ports and the amount of VMs the NAT gateway will support. This example will use a single public IP. Let's create one. We'll give it a name, NAT GW Pub IP. A standard SKU and a static assignment are the only options for a single IP address. Let's click OK, and we'll go to subnets. This is where we assign the subnet to the NAT gateway. We'll start by selecting the VNet that our test VM is on, and then the subnet it's attached to. We don't need it for the Azure Bastion subnet that already has a private IP address. If we had multiple subnets, we could also select it here. So all VMs attached to the different subnets would have access over this NAT gateway. We'll go to Tags, add Tags as needed, and go to Review and Create. And once validation passes, let's click Create. It's deploying. This will take a minute to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. The gateway finished. Let's go to the resource. And we'll go to the NAT gateway. Here we are at the NAT gateway. Let's go to the public IP address. This is the public IP address that will be used to access the internet for any computers on the subnets we selected. Notice this ends in 106. Let's go back to the VM. And before it was using the default outbound access. Now we've attached the NAT gateway to the subnet. So let's refresh. And now we're using the same public IP address that ends in 106 and accessing the internet with the NAT gateway. Now any virtual machine we deploy to that subnet will use the NAT gateway instead of using the default outbound access. That's a quick walkthrough on deploying a NAT gateway. I hope this video helps you better understand the changes coming with default outbound access in Azure and how to provide internet connectivity. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.